Uh, can we get started now? So uh, please take your seats and we'll get started uh, with the second half of the afternoon uh, of the morning. And Michael will uh, present on the analytics integration of PScanner and PubMedNet client. And this is uh, work jointly with, with Daniela and a lot of other people who have been involved in the distributed analytics, the details of which will be presented tomorrow. So please welcome Michael from uh, VA Tennessee and uh, Vanderbilt. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, I'm going to try to. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to just try to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the work we've been doing to try to transition the P scanner architecture and integrate it in with the PopMedNet client and PCORnet, as well as uh, uh, separating some of the um, some of the analytic pipeline and data transformation work from more of a source uh, custom build to more of a generalized representation. And so, you know, much as the, the rest of the group have done, I really just want to first uh, really acknowledge the group of uh, software developers and subject matter experts that, that have been involved in the development of these tools. You know, in particular, uh, Daniela and our collaborators from Lincoln Peak, uh, Bill Clark and James Hancock, um, as well as um, Dax and uh, Malini and Josh at, uh, at the National site and Laura at USC. And so um, these were slides that some of you may remember. The, the introduction, the first few slides, were something that uh, Daniela had shown last year at, a, at this conference. And you know, the way that uh, PScanner um, worked originally is that um, basically you would have a user interface. You would basically set up your staff role. You would define your data set. You would specify your analytic study design and your plan, and that would basically go out to the, to the nodes at the individual institutions. These were VMs that were sort of installed in Toto and would, uh, would basically execute a custom analytic pipeline and then send the results back to the aggregator node for results uh, display and visualization. However, there were a number of challenges we ran into uh, because of uh, that type of implementation. Um, in particular, um, you know, you can't assume that, uh, that every healthcare institution will even want to install a VM. Really, the default for most healthcare systems is they set up a default VM that, that is compatible with their security environment, and then they want you to install applications onto that VM. Particularly in the VA, that turned out to be a significant barrier, and that was a barrier in other inst institutions as well. Um, and in addition, we also wanted to make a, tra trans a transition to really incorporate with the PCORI Datamart client. Um, because it had thorough code review and because it was going to be used by, the, by all of the participating CDRN networks. And then um, lastly, we wanted to transition from the customized analytic uh, type of programming into more of a standardized uh, representation of data variables, uh, data definitions, analytic plans, and then allow a translation engine to handle the site-specific uh, code request and analytic request. And so one of the ways that we've done this is really, uh, um, and this is a lot of work that's being done at USC and National and, and, um, and UCSD, is tr basically build uh, engines to help you represent your, uh, your data processing queries, your um, results uh, data set specifications, and your analysis request in these standardized forms, and then have separate modules at each site, depending on whether or not you have SAS or R or other implementations that can then execute the analyses. And so this is an overall uh, architecture view of, of where we'd like to go. And so there is a portal. And so PopMedNet client, uh, PopMedNet has its own portal. PScanner has its portal. Um, and essentially, our goal is to uh, integrate the PScanner portal as well as uh, you know, pieces of the PopMedNet portal through the, um, through the uh, uh, API with PopMedNet Datamart client so that you can basically set up uh, your, tr your trials, you can set up your studies, you can do your uh, data access views and your, and your regulatory pieces um, either in one or both of these portals. And Daniela will be talking about this uh, in the next uh, presentation. And then uh, submit your requests through, um, through the, basically the PopMedNet Datamart client, which then basically takes that request sends it to the sites, and each site will have basically a site-specific um, implementation that then has an interface engine back to uh, translate the generalized uh, representation of the study request into a site-specific request, and then either implement the anal analysis in you know, a number of different uh, 
applications depending on whatever the healthcare uh, system has. And some of these we've built, some of these we want to build, and, and th these are in various stages of development. And so I'm just going to sort of briefly touch on a few of these other pieces um, today. So as I mentioned, um, for those of you that are un unfamiliar with the PopNetNet client and the, and the PCORI sort of infrastructure for, for doing this work in PCORnet, um, basically the PopNetNet client is, uh, is a set of software I think that was originally developed as part of the uh, Sentinel initiative and has since expanded uh, some of the, the pieces with, Pop, with PopMedNet. And then it's essentially, in it, there's the API is a communication layer between that and the portal. So either the PCORnet portal or the pScanner portal. And that's the user interface interface. And then the analytics side interface goes through data mart adapters. And so there may be a SAS data mart adapter from PCORnet. There may be an R. Um, for ours, we have a site-specific analytic cluster, um, Dan and Oceans, that, help, uh, that can be installed at the sites in order to help do the translation and extension. And we have an existing contract with Lincoln Peak um, to basically extend both the API side and the data mart side adapters so that they can be usable with the uh, pScanner software. And so how this works in the flow from the data mart client to, to the, uh, the, um, the site-specific implementation, and, and I know I, I tried to de-abbreviation uh, de the presentation as much as possible, but, but, um, but I can tell I met with mixed success. But, so you have a, you know, a result request that comes from the portal, from the user interface, goes through, um, you build up that request in your standardized vocabularies and your standardized representations, goes through the data mart client, goes into the data mart adapter, goes to the individual sites, you, you end up with a translation request to that site, so it basically says, well, what, uh, what en analysis engine do you have? Is it SAS, is it R, is it Apache Spark? Um, and then the translation request, the uh, analytic request gets translated, executed in the local environment, the results then come back through up through the site-specific implementation through the data mart client back to the portal and, and potentially aggregated into the PCORnet coordinating node um, for, uh, for synthesis and review. And so I won't go into too many details, but these are a lot of sort of widely used uh, data standards for how, um, for how analytics and data and, uh, and uh, um, data cubes can be represented. Um, Nashville has been mainly working in the PMML space, uh, which is a way to represent risk models and, uh, and uh, results um, in, a, in an XML format that can be portable and tran trans uh, translated both for input and output. And then uh, USC has been working a lot, Daniela's group, with the HQMF and QRDA, trying to represent uh, data sets, cohort builders, um, as well as um, some of the uh, results side. And so, you know, why did we need, the, you know, this particular piece? And it all comes out of the fact that we really can't put virtual machines in a lot of these healthcare systems. So we need a very clean install at the site where you install this and you tell it which, your, which analytic system you're using. You ha install that module for that analytic system, be it R, Spark, or SAS, or an in-database application like uh, Microsoft SQL in R or Oracle in R. And then it, it basically does load balancing and can handle multiple nodes. So you can install multiple analytic pieces behind this. I mean, it can actually coordinate the, uh, the volume of, of, an anal of analytics um, in a load balancing uh, fashion. And so this is the, the, the adapter up, upstream to the, to the data mark client. This is the basically coordinator and, uh, and individual site storage. And then this can be replaced. There's an R version that we have working. There's an R serve version that we have working. You can replace this entire section with Apache Spark or with uh, Oracle in R or another, uh, another type of uh, site-specific installation. And so this is sort of the status of where we are and where we want to be. We've done the R and R serve. Uh, VA actually has a SAS grid implementation, so we'd really like to be able to um, to utilize that. Uh, and then there's also a, a work ongoing to sort of uh, utilize Apache Spark and the machine and learning library for those. Um, Revolution Analytics is a very interesting uh, co company and we have a license to evaluate and try to implement an adapter for that. And then Microsoft SQL is coming out with an R in database in tw for its 2016 version. That's really exciting. So we're looking to explore how you can sort of do your analytics in database, which uh, might speed up the process. And our Oracle already has an in-database function um, that's being explored. And so one of the other pieces that we are um, involved with is building small graphing modules, results modules for some of these analytic pieces. And let me see if I can successfully navigate here. 
And so this is an early prototype um, just for public, uh, for public view that doesn't have any uh, protected health information. These are interactive um, graphs where you can essentially, this is an example of a logistic regression model and it's built on D3, the graphing engine that uh, Daniela showed you earlier with the OMOP and Odyssey tools. Essentially, if you want to know, uh, you know what your odds ratio are for a bit particular thing, if you want to sort it, um, you can sort. You can sort by value. Um, you, know, you can uh, basically uh, narrow your range. So it's a way to do basically interactive data visualization on particular results. There are other examples where you can you know, move your graph, you can zoom, um, and you can sort of see and highlight. And then another example we have is uh, basically a run chart where you can highlight over. And so it's a way for you to, with a very small amount of programming, um, have these uh, results graphing modules that once you have your analytic payload, you can s view them in the PopMedNet portal, you can view them in the Peace Center por uh, portal, and you can keep them as a library of results graphing. And that is um, the presentation, if I can switch back. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so the eventually they will all be, you know, as with any sort of development activity. Um, right now we have uh, all, we have a lot of, oh, sorry. So the question is, are they already available in GitHub? And the answer is a few are, but most aren't. We have a lot of them in sort of pre-release stage or near release stage. And hopefully as they all get released, they'll go into a centralized uh, GitHub repository. Um, same. They've been developed, uh, but haven't been released publicly. We're hoping to sort of do that in bundles. So we, we want to have analytic libraries that have both the sort of metadata around what you have to specify in order to use the method, the actual analytic method, and then the, the widget for the graphical uh, representation sort of in a, in a module. That, that's, that's the goal. Um, that it hasn't been fully integrated yet. We're still, you know, as you always do when you're sort of developing these, these uh, pieces, all the pieces get developed and sort of uh, uh, separately and then you have to get them all integrated into a pipeline to release them and that's the stage where we, where we are at the end of phase one. Good question. Uh, here's a question maybe for the larger audience, but how many of these things were unique to uh, P scanner, and how many in uh, have these lessons been learned, or could they be applied, or were they even issues in other CDRNs and PPRNs? That's a that's a good question. So I think you know it's one of the um, you know I think uh, P scanner has really been sort of pushing al pushing along the distributed analytics and really trying to integrate these uh, resources and pipelines into uh, the PopMedNet client. So I think I think. You know, most of the other, uh, 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 right now, the, the state of sort of using these is you get a SAS uh, query, um, you get a payload, you basically download it and run it in your environment. And so, you know, we're, we're hoping that, um, that all of these sort of get disseminated out to the other CDRNs, but I really don't know of that many other CDRNs that are particularly working in this sort of distributed uh, space. I, Marianne may be able to, to, to help out a little bit more with which other CDRNs are sort of in that space, but I think there's a lot of generalizable code and knowledge that hopefully w that all the uh, CDRNs can potentially use once we de once we release it. Yeah, to, to my knowledge, there are some CDRNs that are centralizing the data, so mm -hmm. that makes it completely different from from this where we distribute the analytics. Cool, well, thank you. Thank you.